Good morning. Good morning. My name's Jamie. I'll be your host for the day. Just thank you for a brief safety brief. Thank you. Uh, which is going to include health and safety, um, and then how to play, and then the game missions afterwards. Uh, so nice and quick. We'll just get through it this morning. See, so this will all look comfortable. I'm ready for my action. Right. First things first. When you are coming out of the uh, safe zone, you're crossing the netting into the play area. You must have eye protection on. Um, if you're not sure about your eye protection, you've been buying something cheap off Amazon. Come and see me. Let me have a look at it. I've had a look around. I can't see anything dodgy, but there's been some, some pretty shoddy stuff coming out just now, so uh, keep your eye off. We do advise full face protection, so if you should in this environment have something to cover your mouth as well. I've got two false teeth from getting them shot out with BBs, but that's from 20 years of play, so that's your own choice. However, eye protection is mandatory. Don't take your eye protection off in the play area, otherwise you are a danger to yourself. What we'll do is if anybody's taking it off or messing about, we'll just remove it from play. Send you down to the safe zone and we'll, Alex or I will come down and have a chat to you try and figure out what's going on. If you are entering the uh, safe zone from the play area, you must make sure that you have emptied your gun. So you take your magazine out, fire a couple of rounds off, make sure you're clear, then you're good to go back into the safe zone. Uh, we just do a dead simple one. Anybody in the safe zone with a magazine is making it dangerous for other people. Obviously you can shoot them in the eyes. Yes? So you need to tell the battery out. It's the only one you can do, innit? As long as you make it inert, that's the, that's, that's the main thing. Right, so, when you go back in the safe zone, anybody with a magazine in the safe zone, pistols, whatever, uh, obviously you're making the area dangerous for somebody else, so we'll simp in you for an hour, um, and then if you do it again, we'll just remove you for the day. That's everybody from this point forward. It's a safety, it's a pure safety. So the rest of the site, well, there's um, from that building where the netting is, goes across right to the top, you'll see there's barrier tape, takes you right up to the fence line. Fence line comes around the back of the side, right to the top, we've got the magazine, top right hand corner. So it's all the way up there. And then the fence line comes all the way around, you've got the assault course, that's all playable. We've actually got a big woodland at the back we never use, but it's there. Um, but the fence line comes down, so just stay within the boundaries of that. The interesting bit is when you are coming in down the bottom here, and there's a path that comes up the back of this building. Now we do allow you to play just at the back of this building slightly, yeah? because you need to when you're assaulting it or you're, you're trying to get into it. But we don't allow you to go around the back of the building or into the back of the building, because it takes you too close to the road and too close to the members of the public. And obviously that's dangerous if, you, if they're gonna get shot and they haven't got any eye protection or anything like that. So do not go down the back of this building. If you are going down the path, that's fine. You can just lay behind the building, there's an area there, but don't go any further on the back of the building. Rest of the play area, well, you've got the, um, all, all the buildings and things, you can jump in out of windows, do what you need to, have lots of fun. Um, we don't go climbing in the rafters of the buildings, we don't go climbing on these bales, uh, because obviously they're going to be dangerous bits of sharp metal on them and things like that. When we're moving around the site, we move with a purpose now, it is damp in the buildings, um, so be careful of footing, especially if you haven't got decent footwear on and ankle support. Also be aware when you're not on the roads and in the buildings of uh, undulating ground that you can't see under the grass. So if you go looning about, you can sprain ankles and do all sorts of things and trip over. So move with a purpose, but don't go looning about too much. The buildings themselves, when we actually did the site and it was all full of uh, rubbish and all that, there was just too much. So we sacrificed some of the rooms. They're called shit rooms and we just uh, normally they're boarded up and they should all be sealed. If you do, however, come across a room where somebody's opened the door by mistake or something like that, and you see it's full of glass and full of dangerous stuff, it's full of glass, full of dangerous stuff, don't go in it because obviously it's going to be a danger to you. Um, that's about it just now for that. That's all you need. I, I'm a qualified first aider. Alex is and uh, Gabe is. We've got first aid packs in the van, massive one in the shed, one at the shop. If you've got a booby, go down to the shop. He'll put a booby and plaster on for you, so a little dot or anything like that. If anybody is hurt, though, and anybody needs emergency, we use the call of Steve's fire on this side. You hear the call of cease fire, please echo it twice as loudly as you can. You make the area safe by taking your gun off. So you've got it on a sling, or you're golden it, or anything like that, put it down, put it on the side. Because if you're not, you're going to end up changing mags and pissing about with it. You just do when you're bored. But we can't afford that, because if somebody's lost their eye throw or something like that, we need to be able to go and deal with that situation. So, put your gun down, put it on the side. I don't want to be having a run about screaming blue murder at you because you've not taken your gun off, well, they should be going to go and deal with somebody that slipped over and hurt themselves. So that's how you do ceasefire. If you hear it, call it twice as loudly as you can, echo it out, it'll happen to the epicenter. We can go and deal with it, jobs are good.
Right, any medication, top left hand pocket. EpiPens, insulin, all that sort of thing up there. Uh, if you've got any medical conditions or if you don't have any sort of medication, come and tell me. You may have told me before, but I might have forgotten by now. So if anybody's got any problems, come and let me know. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that'll do for that. Anybody, any questions on health and safety? Easy enough. Last thing I'm going to mention is COVID. <coughs> Two main points here. First one's Ludo. Big white nut walks around, dribbles, looks at you sorrowfully because you might have food. So uh, <coughs> don't feed him because he just farts too much. But more than that, don't pet him because if everybody pets them up, then you're not going to get COVID. The second one's the toilets. Simply, that, that's just the main area where everybody's going to get con cross contamination and touch. All we've got is a big black box outside. On top of that, hand sanitizer, which is obvious for itself. But we've got wipes. You have a wipe on the way in. Wipe everything you're going to use on the way in. Use it. Wipe everything you've used on the way out. The courtesy, throw it in the bin as you go out, you're done. It's easy, isn't it? That's it, that's all we're gonna adhere to. That's what we need to do. Anybody wanna add anything else to that? Are you happy with that? Excellent. Yeah, so off the game of honor. Down to the person who's being shot at to take a hit. When you get a hit, you'll know in two ways. The first way you're gonna know is you're gonna feel it. The ping or a sting or something like that. The second way you're gonna know is you're gonna hear it. So it's gonna come off your webbing, off your kit, or off something that you are you are currently uh, wearing, you know. Um, so when you get a hit, you notify the enemy in two ways. The first one, is you shout, and this is the most important one, because sometimes people can't see um, people shouting, oh sorry, so they can't see people's hands up in the air, but they can hear you shouting. So you go, hit, and you get your hands up in the air, nice and clear. Guys, always the guys who are talking during my briefs that we follow around to begin with, because they're always the ones that cause a problem. Your group has now been talking twice, stop. That's okay, that's okay, guys behind you Enough. So, hit! Make it clear. If you're in the cover, move out. If you lay down, stand up. If you're behind a tree, you look like a bush, get out of the way. Make it clear and you, you are hit. Don't just stand there with your hand up against a tree or something like that leaning. Move out. If you're in the line of fire and still being shot, move out of the way. That's how you take a hit, nice and easy. Now, if you're unable to take a hit because you can't feel it, you're wearing too much equipment, you can't hear it, the marshals will then step in and we expect you to do something about it. That's simple, walk across and say, this has happened, you're not reacting to it, you need to react to it, otherwise the other customers are gonna be happy. We're not gonna let you continue playing because you can't take a hit, because you need to do something about it. If we did let you continue playing, we'd have a, a lot of pissed off people. So the mask is easy, you do something about it as you, if you're approached. You've got a problem, you deal with it. So that's how we deal with it, that's simple. Now, the next way of being killed is a grenade hit. So a grenade is anything that goes bang, and if you are in 15 feet, you take it to hit. 15 feet, easy to remember. Three body lengths. If you have three people, one, two, three, lay head to toe, and you are within the distance of that, you take it as a hit. Cover from a grenade is any built brick structure. So if I was hiding on this side, and one went off on this side, this is a firm, thick built structure, I'd be good. A tree, your mate, a fat bloke in front of you, um, a leaf, you know, things like that ain't going to work. We do use the bales, we do use the bars uh, in, in, in the buildings, we do use uh, the shower blocks. We don't use the cupboards in the buildings because the cupboards would never give you enough um, enough protection from the blast wave inside a, inside a room. When you're in the dorm blocks, you'll see there's new cupboards where the beds used to be next to. We don't use them as cover. So if one goes off in one of those rooms, you're not going to take it as a hit anyway. This courtesy, if somebody's thrown a grenade, paid a bit of money for it, and you're just about in there, you're not sure, take it. If you're running away, and the grenade goes off, look back, see if it's gone off, if you're within that 15 foot. Don't go an extra couple of steps and take it. There's always the people that are going to be triers, the ones that always just try not take a hit, not play. You'll, you'll see marshals following them about all the time. So don't be a trier, be a player, be a good player, and that, that's, that's where you need to be standing on the line today. So different types of grenades. We've got fizzy grenades. And we've got pyro. On that, I'm just going to mention smokes. So, uh, smokes are fizzies. Uh, smokes we can throw anywhere outside the buildings, and we only use white smokes. You've got uh, anything else apart from Bologna Gay or TSFLX? Come and show me. Probably allow it if it's a white smoke, and allow, allow millies and things like that. So, uh, if you've got anything, come and show me as long as it's white, but we don't use anything else and not in the buildings. Just for asthmatics and it sends people over the edge. Uh, so, the different types you've got the cardboard ones, so you give them a strike, they're like a match head. 
once they're going it's fizzing don't hold it too long don't try and detain it in your hand wang it as soon as you can uh, but don't wang it directly at somebody that's near them is good enough you can wang them through windows upstairs downstairs whatever they're great for that the cardboard fizzies are great the dangerous ones that we have to be aware of are the two reusables they come in two forms the first one is a vtg or a bfg or a time grenade aluminium core plastic body when these are deployed, obviously we want them rolling across the ground so they're not going to hurt anybody. They're not that heavy, they're not that bad, they're not as bad as the other ones. So you deploy one under arm, under your hip, roll it across the ground, hits the ground three foot in front of you, so three foot's only that, and that then takes the impetus out of it and it's just bobbling around. You can roll up to 30 foot then, don't mind, because it's just going across the ground. The most it's going to do is hit somebody in the ankle, which should all have anti protection on a beat one. So, Rolling across the ground, then that goes off. That's how I deploy one of them. Easy. The other one is the impacts. This is where we struggle, and we always struggle with impacts. What I don't want is this great big piece of metal, yay big, hitting somebody in the head. That's what I don't want. So to avoid that, we have very simple rules. You may deploy them up to one body length, your body length. This stops any argument. Okay, one body length. At the end of deployment, they shouldn't be more than two body lengths away. If I came to the corner of a building, that's where these things are great. So if I come to a room and I want just to drop one around, I could come up, I've got my little grenade, get to the corner, I just drop it there, bang, take out the room. I could even drop it to the point where I would kill myself because I know that piece of metal has not gone around the corner. So what's not acceptable is if you come to a room and flick it around the corner. You see people do that? So you've got somebody just left behind the corner who's just waiting with a pistol to get a grenade to the face. Very dangerous, so I've just got to be dead tight on these. Don't mind if you deploy it when you kill yourself. You don't have to take it as a kill, but I know that's hit the ground and not somebody's face. I'm happy, you're happy, the other players are happy. One body length hits the ground, that's it. Now, some of them are really crap, but I've not seen them around, so I'm not going to mention which ones they are. But what people have to do is they have to wang them at the ground to try and get them to go off. So the problem is that we have vinyl floors um, and rubber on the floors here, and it does cause the, the grenades to come back up again. So that's why we have the two body lengths in. We do understand sometimes things hit, miss hit, and they roll away or they roll in. And that's fine. We know we're not going to get bothered about that, as long as it was deployed correctly in the first place. But it does stop people being stupid, wanging them at the ground or being stupid. Also, don't forget with those, it's an under hit deployment. Anybody have any questions on reusable grenades? Misuse of reusable grenades today results in them being taken off here, yeah? just to make this place to make the environment safe for everybody else. So if you misuse them, we'll be taking them off you and any more you have. All we're trying to do is make the area safe. Okay, and we do that very quickly by taking the grenades off you. If you ain't got them, you can't do it. Does everybody agree to that? Yeah? Okay, that's great, that's it. Seems there's a lot of confusion out in the world about how we do chrono and how we do grenades, and it's dead, dead simple, it's just for safety. <laughs> right. Are you struggling? Okay. <laughs> Next one. Uh, so, you got a surrender kill. We don't use a knife kill just now because of COVID. So, if you move upon somebody or somebody moves upon you and you're in a concealed position or you keep up behind them, you don't have to shoot them. And in fact, I never want anybody shot closer than a meter. There's no reason to. You can always take a step back and shoot somebody. I understand sometimes in the buildings you both come on a corner and you both come at an angle on each other and it can happen, you know, these things happen. But, normally, if you can help it, don't do it. If you've got somebody banged to right, you can say surrender. It's up to them whether they take it. It's not an insta-kill. Okay, they do not have to take a surrender. Because we have many a time where once somebody that's in a crap position or is in a position where they wouldn't be able to surrender a whole team or try to surrender more than one person, says surrender. Okay? not an insta kill you've not going to take them out it's up to them whether they take it or not if you do take it kudos good on you thank you uh, and however if you think that person's trying it on you can definitely just turn your gun on them and continue firing anybody clear on that one you hit take it don't shout hit loudly because they're made in a position where they can go and take other people out the one time i wouldn't shout it loudly they're right next to you they don't need to just go yeah sticky bugger some expletives under your breath carry on so at this site you've been taken out hit and you wait exactly where you got shot. If you ran an extra couple of steps, you go back to where you were. This is only the first time you get shot. You then wait for a medic. Now we have a medic rule for two reasons. The first one is the enemy have an advantage for taking you out. 
Okay, and if you are not waiting your two minutes, you are cheating and denying them that advantage. The second reason is you need a little break because right now everybody's COVID arsed and they're just not fit enough. So we have to have a little break, make sure you're stood still for a minute and you get to watch the game. Okay, and it just works. So the first time you shot, hit! You wait for the medic. You can say medic during that time. You can't give anything away. <coughs> you can't give any of the information away. You can't talk to anybody else. You can just say medic. You don't go on the radio. Within two minutes, a friendly player can come up and medic you. If you haven't been medic within two minutes, you are dead. You bled to death from the wound caused to you. And then you go back to your region and carry on. Within that two minutes, a friendly player can approach you. They will come within one meter. They will say medic to you. So I'll point at you and say medic. They will then cover you. They will say nothing else. They don't need to. They don't need to do anything else, but they do need to cover you. The rest of the medic is then down to you. So the rest of it's yourself medicking once they've instigated it. If they move away from you, that's the medic stopped, the, the bollocks stick. You need to stay within that one meter. You can then move yourself one meter, which means you would never be more than two meters away from the person medicking you. So for me, normally, I just lie on the ground or do something to get myself out of the way. But then you're both in cover. I would then count down audibly from 20. It needs to be audibly because if you just suddenly stand there with your gun and raise your gun up and start firing because somebody's medic you and they haven't seen you being medic, they're going to presume you're cheating. 20, 90, 80 at that level. When you get to zero, you are then back in the game and you can play again. You have been medic. Okay? Somebody comes over. Medic, you then get into cover, you then start counting down from 20. They don't do it, you do it. They cover you, okay? Once you get to zero, you're back in the game. Either one of you gets hit, you both take it as a hit. So why the person who comes to medic you then covers you? You notify the other person and say, sorry mate, hit. So he's making himself vulnerable by coming to medic you, he gets all excited. He's medicking you, trying to get you back in the game. It's all fun. He's trying to cover you. Either one of you gets hit, you notify the other. To stop the initial person being camped on, they have now lost their opportunity for a medic and they are dead. So if you were the one counting down, you're dead. Now if you were the person coming across the medic, it would be whether it's your first hit or second hit. We only ever get one medic. After you've been medicked, you're dead. You're not like Super Mario where you keep on coming back again. You get one medic. After you've had that medic, you're dead and you go back to whatever's happened in the scenario, which all day will be go back to a regen point and then you can come back into game. If you're not sure about the medic rule, please feel free to contact any marshal or come and see me. You're better understanding it and come and see me, especially the new guys. We might even go a little bit over it for you uh, when we do a gun brief with you in a minute. Just to clarify thoughts, it does work, it works easy and it makes it a bit more fun. Plus it gives the enemy an advantage. If you're at any point choosing not to wait for your medic, you are cheating. That's it. Right, so the big no-nos. First one is blind fire. So when I'm firing, you fire from down at hip, medium or high. My rule is simple. If I can see the back of the gun, the front of the gun and the target, I'm not blind firing. So that encompasses all sorts of things like shooting through holes. You put the barrel of a gun through a hole, you can't see the back of the gun on the front target. Don't do it. You've got to come along and put your gun around a corner or over the top of a bar. You've got to put that gun in somebody's eye in their ear in the face. You're going to hurt them. This is why we do it. So make sure you can always see the back of the front of the target. I ended up bollocking some kid last week. <laughs> Couldn't see the back of the gun front target. Just make sure you can. You can shoot it high. I can still see the back of the front of the target. Can't I? That's it, dead that easy. Don't blind fire. Blind fire is dangerous, it's going to endanger somebody else. If you are blind firing, we'll remove you from play, work out what's going on with you afterwards. FPS. <clears throat> so, it's not so much FPS, it's more the jewels, how, how the BBs travel, okay? So, what we do is, in the morning, we're there, we ask you what BBs you've got in your gun, you tell us what you've got, you know. <clears throat> if we need to, we'll put point twos in. We'll tell you what your gun needs to be to be the equivalent of our sight limit. AEGs, pistols and shotguns, the sight limit is 3 to 8. That's one joule of energy. Anybody who's over that may still be within our variance. So 
or variant of the little bit of give that we give sometimes on something. Yeah? So if you're an engineer, you'll understand this, yeah, this is 8 mil, but a little bit of variance is 8.2 mil. It's just that little bit of uh, tolerance you give. So with it, with, when we're chronoing, the variance takes you up to 350. So if anybody is over 350, the 22 FPS over our sight limit at a start, and then whatever they are over 350. You're over on our sights on point twos, and you leave for the day. You're done. Okay, this is a complete solid. Make sure your gun's chrono. At the end of me briefing, the gun will be over there by the blue barrels, and you are welcome to come over and chrono and get all the advice, all the help, all the setting of um, hops, anything we can do to help you. We're there to help you. Please do not go into game without chronoing your gun or expecting that you chronoed it on your mate's gun chrono last night and it's going to work. Chrono on ours, make sure you're correct. We have telltale, so we know what the dual equivalent is for each weight. And if you are over that telltale, we'll put point twos in your gun. And the simple way of doing it, and the simple way of doing it in game, is if your gun is over on site, on point twos, that we put in, you're done. You are welcome to use our point twos, you are welcome to check. Very, very clear on this. If your gun is over on site, the onus is on you, not us. It's our job to check it. The reason is people can come to us, tell fibs about what they've got in the gun. They can come to us and turn the hop on. They can go back to the car and change the spring. They can change the FPS nowadays. There are that many ways to cheat a chrono. If you're just chronoing on what you think and putting a tag around a gun, somebody's going to go back to the car and fuck with it. This is the only way of stopping that is to do random checks in game. And those that come here regularly know that we do it. Please do not make the mistake. Semi-auto rifles are um, DMRs, dedicated marksman rifle. Must look like a dedicated marksman rifle. Don't approach them with a carbine or a pistol. They have a 60-foot engagement range, and sort of bold action. That's from the corner here to the start of the car park. So you wouldn't engage anybody closer than that. 400 FPS. We don't take it up to 450 because... Of nowadays you've got people with triggers that are that fast, especially on HPA systems, they might, might, as well be, might as well be full auto. That's why we don't take it over 400. Plus we take into account dual creep by keeping it at 400 for the DMRs. Anybody got DMR? Oh, that's easy then. Bolt actions, 500. Um, um, and that's on a point two. That's where we measure it on a point two. Now I realise there's also dual creep involved with that, but that means I just don't take the, the, the limit up to 525 for anything. It's dead easy, so I just keep it at 500 um, equivalent there on jewels. Uh, once again, 15 foot radius. Uh, so that's that one. Last one's cheat calling. If you are getting salty or you're not happy about something, call yourself out. Call a marshal. Let us know. If somebody's not playing properly or somebody's done something wrong, rule based, don't tell them yourself. Let us know. Uh, give us a description. We'll go across and deal with it. Don't deal with it yourself. Now, if you're being abusive to anybody, the player or anything else like that, then we're just going to move you from play. Uh, just get you off site because one person being abusive can affect the whole game day. Basically, they get abusive, their team gets abusive, <coughs> spreads like wildfire, you end up with a bad day. It's easier to remove one person who's getting abusive. So, you know, a bit of banter, a bit of fun, great, especially if you know people. Um, but camaraderie, this is what Airsoft's about. You're being abusive, calling swear names or anything like that, you just bounce. It's easy. Right, that's the big no nos. Finally, building rule. If you are within 15 foot of a building, remember the three body lamps? You should be on semi-auto only. All fire within buildings is semi-auto only. When you're approaching a building, if you're further than 15 foot, you may fire at full auto. If you're inside the building, firing out. And you're fu you may fire at full auto. However, if you're firing a DMR, a sniper rifle, or full auto, I need you to be at the front window. Only because you've got a better peripheral vision. What we've had in the past is people lay back in the rooms, somebody crosses that window and gets a full auto burst down the rear or a sniper rifle down the rear. So we need you with those types of weapons or full auto to be at the back. If you're firing on semi, however, you may sit back in the building like you would do normally. That's us. Little bit. Uh, we don't use reusable pyro on the stairs because if you kick it or somebody, you deploy it on top of the stairs, that's easy. But it's not so much you deploying it wrong that I'm worried about. It's more the fact that it's on the stairs. Somebody else comes down, either slips on it or kicks it and you're going to get your own grenade in the back of the head. Do gun hits count today? No. No? No? 
Right, that's it. Okay, that's it. Go on, it's don't count today. If your gun's hit today, now, um, if, it, if, it's in, if it's sort of downwards and like that, or you're in a holster, you'd take it as a hit, wouldn't you? However, if you've got it up in the air, you're ready firing, or you've got it poking through a window and it gets in the side, your gun does get hit, somebody's fired, they've heard the BB come out, they've seen the BB, they've heard it hit something, so they're presuming that you cheated. Just shout weapon hit, don't shout gun hit, because uh, people automatically think you're shouting gun hit, and then you t they sort of turn up outside, you shoot them, and they're like, what the fuck? So shout weapon hit, okay, today. What about friendly fire? Um, we tried a few things recently, it's interesting just letting you guys choose. Um, if, if you get shot by a friendly player, do you take it, or do they take it? So hands up if you take it. Okay, hands up if they take it. That's about 50-50, really. Okay. Hands up if you both take it. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go, for the, we'll go for the first one. Does you take it, uh, obviously. We've, we've, we've armed you up now. You'll probably notice that you're all armed up on one side. So if you're on the red team, you're armed up on the right side. So if you see somebody with a left arm there, uh, and if you're armed up on the left side, you're on the blue team, and your right arm's there. That's an easier way to try and tell friend from foe, yeah? Does anybody have anything else they want me to add to the brief? They're sitting there on the right, not the left. Which tab put that on? The um. red one. The red tab. <laughs> right, we'll sort you in a minute. Yeah? Ramblers. Ramblers? We've got two carbon sites, you might get dog walkers in the front. We don't have anybody on site, but we covered it in the in the in the um, ceasefire rule. If you see anybody without glasses on, anybody should be a ceasefire. Good point, though. You're on the front of the window, which is second story, but yeah. you can't walk past. I can't differentiate. I can't differentiate. As soon as I do, it's like anything in airsoft. As soon as you bring a little ease in it, some fucker gets it wrong. <laughs> it's every time. I, I, I can't differentiate with some rules. It's hard. Uh, it's, it's like uh, on the stairways with, with, with a grenade, you know, should you be able to do them halfway down or whatever. You just can't, you know, it's a pain or do them at the bottom of the stairs. It just, it, as soon as you bring a little bit of ambig ambiguity in there, somebody gets it wrong. Right, okay, so that's the game rules. Everybody's happy? Everybody knows what's going on? Spot on. Uh,